So hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to this session today. Uh, I'm Ayumi and he is Tomoyasu. We are here uh, as a speaker today. Uh, and <laughs> sorry, uh, mm, this is our first time to uh, do this kind of a presentation in English, so we are a little bit nervous, but in uh, a good way, so yeah. So today we are here to talk about uh, uh, things that we learned through an um, experience uh, of uh, releasing our software as open source. Uh, the title is A Journey to Open Source from Conservative Japanese Company. Uh, so I am seeing a lot of people here in this room today and actually it is way more than I expected. So. <sighs> Thank you very much for your attention. So uh, let's get it started. Uh, first of all, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Ayumi Watanabe. I'm working with Hitachi Solutions. It is an IT company in Japan. Uh, I am a manager of open source and s bomb management business of Hitachi Solutions. Our business is, I would say, like consulting business. Uh, we are uh, supporting uh, Japanese companies to now learn about SBOM or open source. And also we help our customers uh, to manage their open source and SBOM uh, for their compliance and security risk. And uh, I am also a community member of OpenChain. In Japan, OpenChain have a local work group it is Open Chain Japan work group. Uh, last month, I became a leader of the planning subwork group of, of Open Chain Japan. So I am very excited to support uh, our community members uh, to communicate uh, each other more and more. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, and there is in script. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, let me explain why I started this story and why I decided to release open source software, my part, and okay. Uh, yes, uh, I am, uh, today, uh, my name is Tomoyasu Akashi. Mm. I'm a software developer in uh, Hitachi Solution LTD. Mm. Uh, my usually work in is a uh, uh, <coughs> Spawn engineer and management business of HTC solutions and, and uh, after I speak it, but and I'm a uh, uh, main developer for uh, editor for Spawn. Is this OSS? Okay. So again, we are very happy to be here as a speaker. So first of all, let me introduce uh, our company. Uh, we are working for Hitachi Solutions. It is, an Jap it is a Japanese company. It's a, it is an uh, IT company. And we are one of subsidiaries of Hitachi Limited in Japan. And uh, we are focusing on system integration uh, in Japan. And so uh, a large amount of our, our engineers are system, uh, system engineers. And we are using open source a lot for our uh, development of uh, our package or our system or uh, everything that. And uh, what is conservative in the title? I am using the word conservative uh, as a meaning like uh, a company who has no or limited policy rule or process for a contribution, uh, contrib I mean, contribution uh, to the open source ecosystem. And uh, uh, in this meaning, we are conservative. And uh, it is very common in Japan. Uh, let me use this, uh, this uh, chart to explain that. This chart is a part of the survey of OSS compliance uh, operations in, com in companies 
which was redid uh, maybe two or three years ago as Open Chain Japan. In uh, this figure says 33% uh, out of 58 uh, companies have a documented process for a contribution to the OSS community. What do you think about? It is enough or very low? <laughs> uh, considering the fact uh, uh, many of companies in these 58 companies are a member of Open Chain, maybe I should say this 33% num is quite low. But uh, this is the uh, reality in Japan. Uh, so my long introduction is over now. Uh, this is our overview. So today we are talk about our story to release an, our internal software on GitHub as an open source project. The story is uh, one software developer, which is he, made up his mind to release his software as open source. And he knows uh, at that time there are no uh, documented process for contribution, so he asked uh, his manager, it was me, uh, for help. So we did a lot for contribution and we learned a lot from that. And we finally make it happen to release our source code as an editor for SBOM on GitHub. Uh, editor for SBOM is just the editor <laughs> for people who, can, he, who want to edit or read uh, SBOM. Uh, you can download our editor for SBOM uh, from our GitHub repo with this QR code. So if you are interested in uh, uh, SBOM or SPDX, and if you have any chance to uh, read, write, and edit uh, uh, SPDX, which is one of the one of uh, formats of SBOM, uh, it's this our uh, editor for SBOM would be good help for you. Uh, so I. Uh, Today's session uh, is divided into four parts. Section one and two is, talk, is a talk uh, from developer side, uh, which is him. And section three is a talk from uh, manager side, which is me. And we have section four as a conclusion. So it's over to you. Oh, is it? I confused. Okay, you have more chance, please. First of all, let me explain why I started this history and why I decided to release open source software. Uh, my part may be a little out of place for us for concession, but it is a context of our difficulties and learning in our open source software release procedures. So, I'd like to know the context before hearing about them. Uh, my main job is developing enterprise application. Most recently, I was in charge of an implementation related to SBOM and SPDX. As you know, uh, the specification of SPDX project is open source, and some of, uh, official open source software exists. So, the specific of my job, I learning them and developing some features related to them. I think for general, progr uh, general programmers, uh, it is natural to use language support features like um, syntax highlighting and a candidate display. Hmm. Uh, for example, it is Java, uh, Eclipse will provide rich support for it. Uh, for it. If it's TypeScript on Visual Studio Code, uh, you can uh, find and install your favorite extension yourself uh, in addition to pre-installed features. However, I noticed that uh, SPDX still lacks the language support features. That's uh, other language, programming language feature uh, always has. This realization was the first trigger for uh, my uh, story. 
And I'm sure any programmer would agree that, and they would do their work with the language support features. And so I wanted such features for SPDX. I thought uh, how to make. As a result, I found that I could make it myself uh, as an extension of Visual Studio Code. Therefore, uh, I decided to try this challenge. After a while, uh, my, co my code turned out to be good enough for me. It could have just needed uh, as my own tool, uh, but it did notice, uh, I noticed that a uh, non-similar extension uh, existed on Visual Studio Code Marketplace at that time. Then I thought, uh, don't anyone else need these features? <laughs> this picture is uh, me at that time. <laughs> also, I thought uh, it would be the nature for this code to exist there as open source, just like the uh, reference SPDX project. As you know, I just said, uh, these features are usually provided free of charge as open source uh, in other programming, lang uh, programming language. Also, uh, I thought my code is definitely not perfect, but maybe it's still useful for someone. Consequently, uh, I decided to turn my code for myself into open source software and uh, suggested this challenge to Ayumi. In addition, uh, I thought it maybe could uh, contribute uh, to SBOM and SPDX community, go along, have a positive impact uh, on our business. Okay. Now let me explain the open source software. The name is Editor for SBOM. As I already mentioned in a little bit, it is a visual surgery code extension uh, leading SPDX file or version 2.2. The features are syntax highlighting, hover information, uh, print sold snippets, completion, go to declaration, and check syntax errors. They are all very common features, but uh, I just said I made it my for myself, and so it's uh, not completely compliant with the specification, and all of features uh, are still development. And speed development, sorry. The source code of this extension and distribute under MIT license. This extension is made of Node.js and library for this uh, Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, it's implemented to comply with SPDX specification uh, v22. In addition, uh, all it is not directly dependent, uh, but I reference official SPDX open source software code, uh, like SPDX tool for the concepts and structures. Okay. And finally, it finished to speak about why I decided to read this open source software. Uh, and where's, uh, what's the uh, open source software. But as a side note, I explained the situation at the time of creation. The context I'm going to talk about it uh, is the point that uh, the collaborated people with us were concerned uh, about in the uh, open source software uh, release procedures. That uh, uh, Ayumi will explain later. First, uh, I made this OSS while I was working. Uh, however, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, ordered as a job, uh, it was personal ingenuity work. Second, uh, it, don't, it doesn't contain any code I had, uh, I had made in other job. Uh, it includes only code writing for this software. Third, I already say that at the beginning, uh, I learned the SPDX specification and uh, how to use official open source software, uh, which I use as knowledge during development during my work. However, 
Uh, other than that, uh, how to create extension using be just as you call uh, and language server protocol, uh, how to write Node.js and how to pass. I learned um, uh, those by myself in private. Okay, my path in the end. From now, uh, Ayumi will explain what we have done to make the software I made uh, into open source software uh, and difficulties, learnings in our open source release procedures. Thank you. So uh, let's move on to uh, manager's side. Uh, one day, one of my team member, which was he, came to me and said, hey, I would, I'd like to my software open source. What should we do? And at the moment, I heard that I was so, so impressed. And also, I was so happy because a uh, young developer in my team came to think about contribution and uh, spontaneously. So I immediately said, of course, why not? Let's do that. So, uh, but at that time, we already know there are there is no uh, documented process for a contribution in my company. So we started to uh, we started to figure out what should we do before I open our code uh, on GitHub. And uh, we talked a lot of people in my company to figure out what should we do. <laughs> we talked and talked. Somebody said, oh, I have no idea, so let's ask another person. Uh, some, per some people said, uh, we cannot decide, so uh, before us, you should ask the other uh, department or the, uh, the other person. So uh, finally, I figured out uh, uh, things that we should do before I open our code. And they are this. Uh, this is actually 10 steps of process. It was uh, huge, <laughs> right? And uh, in, this, uh, in this chart, from, two, uh, from, uh, section, from uh, step two to step, to step seven, is our uh, usual work. I mean, we usually do this kind of work for our property uh, development. And so uh, this time I noticed that uh, for open source, we do the same process for our proprietary development. Additionally uh, to that, uh, we need uh, more than things, uh, for special, especially for open source. It was a huge uh, work, I mean. So uh, I, let me explain uh, those uh, works uh, in detail, step by step. So first of all, I went to ask for advice from our finance de department because in Japan, we need to record every software that we develop as a company's asset. So I, uh, we need to uh, uh, have their advice from finance, uh, finance aspect. And uh, our financial department give, give me an advice like, uh, if you distribute your code, no, uh, please note that you, dis uh, uh, you distribute the place that everybody can access. Because if you uh, distribute your code to the place that very limited or specific person can, only uh, limited or specific person can uh, access, it should be uh, considered as an illegal payoff from company to other person. So uh, they said, uh, please make sure to uh, open it, uh, make it open to the public. It means uh, uh, the place that everybody equally can access. So we decided to, uh, we decided to uh, uh, open our code on GitHub. GitHub is the best place because there, um, everybody, uh, everybody can access. And then uh, we did patent survey uh, supported by our IP department. This survey is for uh, check if 
uh, there is no uh, patent infringement. I mean, uh, n uh, but no, not violating other person's uh, trademark or IP. And also, uh, this is check, this check is for if there is a possibility to obtain our own IP or trade secret. And we passed this survey. And then we did export control survey. It is for export control. And, and uh, this time we have no encryption code, encryption uh, modules in, my, in our code. So we passed this survey, very easy. After that, we did uh, open source compliance check. This process is our usual process for uh, internal or uh, proprietary de development uh, in our company. And, uh, in this, uh, and, and regarding this uh, OSS compliance check, our company ha gave us a very solid support to, for uh, developers. So uh, let me explain in detail. Uh, this uh, open source compliance check is to know all components in your software for security risk management and also uh, compliance, compliance management. Our company uh, gave us a solid, uh, solid support from uh, specialists of each category inside the company and the system. So in this figure, uh, we have, for example, software engineer department who, give, uh, who, gives, who gives us uh, technical support and process improvement from the aspect of technical professional. And uh, we have quality assurance department. Uh, they gave us a quality risk management and vulnerability uh, management support. And also we have intellectual property department. They help us with open source compliance check. And we also have open source professionals for best practice. And we also have software composition analysis tool and vulnerability detect and alert system as our internal system uh, for our help. And what we did in uh, this open source uh, compliance check is very uh, complicated. So I will uh, explain with uh, this slide. So first of all, uh, in, how do I say, designing uh, phase, we do uh, uh, this, uh, uh, check, this uh, um, check for open source uh, selection phase. Uh, the purpose is uh, that to conduct an early risk assessment for open source compliance that the development team is considered to use. It is like a shift left. In this phase, we do our first uh, functional check. Uh, this is to ensure if the OSS is sufficient uh, for the requirement of the project, project program. And also we do usage record check uh, to ensure uh, if uh, this open source is famous or mature enough for use. And we do risk assessment and risk control for uh, EOL risk. And after that, uh, in development phase, we do uh, three, three steps like this. This is uh, to be aware of all uh, OSS components uh, in our software and uh, find out unintended use of open source. Uh, we do contamination check and risk assessment for unintended use of open source with SDA2 uh, by analyzing source code and check compliance and security risk. And uh, we do a compliance check supported by our IP department. And uh, after that, in maintenance phase, we do uh, some monitoring and risk assessment for uh, avoiding risks in early stage <clears throat> by taking appropriate actions to vulnerable and AOL of open source components in products. We do monitoring and risk assessment regularly with our vulnerability management system. And we do risk handling if something is happening. 
And after OSS compliance check, we did trademark research supported by our PR department. This trademark research is for uh, uh, for uh, uh, preventing the infringement of trademark of trademarks of third parties, and uh, and <clears throat> this is actually for naming. Uh, the most fun part of your open so your OSS project is, uh, uh, I guess, naming to give a name, the cool name to your code. And uh, by and we also have a bunch of ideas for uh, ideas of the name, cool name for our open source. But after this trademark research, we finally choose very boring name. Uh, editor for SVOM because of it is very uh, a safe name uh, not to violate someone's trademark. No, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is uh, very boring, but, uh, uh, but uh, it is of course very safe name and uh, the company uh, want to uh, protect us for uh, trademark infringement, so uh, we agreed that. And after that, we did software quality tests supported by our QA department, and we got uh, approval by IP department. And uh, after that, we did document check uh, supported by our TV PR department. Our PR department checked every uh, text, every uh, document that we wanted to put on put uh, on the uh, GitHub. Uh, like uh, read me or description or uh, guidance of our uh, or guidance of instrument because uh, they want to uh, make sure there is no hypes or errors or uh, in that document and it was very helpful because they found out some errors or typos for us so it worked and uh, finally we went to get a final approval of our executives. I went to uh, my executives and said, uh, uh, I would, we would like to uh, release our code uh, as open source. So I, the reactions of our executives uh, were very positive. So it was a very nice point and I was so, so impressed. And no one said, oh no, no, or uh, we should not do that. Uh, everybody said, uh, uh, very good, give a try. Uh, something like that, very positive. And it was very nice because it is, uh, it is uh, because uh, I think uh, our managers, our executives understand the importance of open source and uh, the importance of uh, uh, contribution, of course, to get involved with the, uh, the uh, innovation outside of, of our company. Uh, so uh, uh, it was very good uh, and fun uh, experience to know uh, our, uh, our executives are very positive uh, for uh, contribution. And uh, uh, and I also figure out uh, the thing that they, our con our executives are considered were risks, risks, risks for example, uh, patent infringement and a trademark violation because it might be a lawsuit. And also they were, they are very concerned about uh, negative effects caused by bad quality of code because it might be damage our company's reputation as a developer. And uh, they also considered about uh, the risk to get involved in a controversy online. It also affects our, uh, our reputation. So uh, I explained the, everything that we did to reduce uh, the, those kind of risks. Uh, to our managers and executives, and we got uh, final approval uh, by managers. Yay. So this was the timeline. 
we started this activity in October uh, last year, and we finally released our source code on GitHub in February this year. Actually, it takes five months <laughs> before just uh, for just uh, preparing our uh, contribution. It was so, so long time, but uh, we did. Uh, so, I, uh, through this uh, experience, we found out many issues and the good point of our company. Uh, issues. Uh, we have no uh, documented uh, process for a contribution. We have, uh, we have not, uh, we didn't have. And also we didn't have practical experience of contribution in our company. Uh, uh, because of this, uh, our specialist, our inside specialist cannot decide it is okay or not because they have no experience for uh, all the open source activity. So I think it is uh, issues, but we can learn uh, from experience, I think, in future. And another issue is uh, we tend to prioritize no risk over making challenges. It is very bad thing, I think, because no challenge, no innovation, you know. And uh, a lot of process took us long time and the cost to finish. Uh, so it is also very big issues for us. And uh, also we found out very good point of our company. For example, uh, everybody is very positive for contribution. Uh, it is because everybody knows the importance of open source and they know how much we are rely on uh, the open source ecosystem. So uh, to find out that uh, it was uh, very good because, uh, yeah, because it is uh, very difficult to uh, uh, make uh, executives uh, for it to decide uh, do, to do open source activity. And uh, of course, a uh, good point is we can have solid support by our internal professionals like IP, uh, PR, uh, QR, QA departments, and the open source specialists. It was uh, very helpful. And you wanna add something? Yes. Issues? Yeah. In uh, adding uh, my level of side opinion, uh, open source software release is a still very hard challenge in conservative Japanese company. In this case, uh, why I was very lucky because she, uh, the person I suggest my plan, uh, is positive about open source software uh, contributing and uh, supported to me. Also. Uh, I didn't quite realize that uh, we needed documentation and other uh, resource in addition to code. This is the same real work. And uh, some process, in my opinion, uh, such as the process of trademark research and uh, naming it as a force bomb, uh, take, uh, took two months. Uh, it is not necessary to spend that much time. Do you spend that much time on it? In any case, mm, I would like to improve time consuming part like this in the future. Thank you. Uh, and so uh, through, our, through this activity, uh, I decided to do something for future for our company. For example, uh, we need to be develop a documented process to contribute uh, on company level. And, of, and also we need to set evaluation standards for each procedures uh, to decide if it is okay or not. And uh, we need to increase eff efficiency by automation, for example, system, process, or uh, checklist, or uh, document everything. This is for, uh, I should say, a second runner or a third runner following us uh, maybe uh, someone 
uh, decided to uh, start open source project in our company uh, out of us. And uh, now our, our company is hosting uh, three uh, open source projects and out of three, two is our team. So uh, we need to encourage our developers to contribute a lot more and more. And to do that, I personally think I need to establish OSPO, Open Source Program Office, in our company to lead everyone to be interested in open source and the open source ecosystem, especially uh, for uh, contribution. So uh, mm, the, that brings me to the end of my presentation. So this is a story of our, how do I say, struggle uh, to our open source. And in future, I would like to share more our experience to be very mature uh, company for contribution. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> And we have uh, five minutes left, so we are happy to have your uh, comments, your feedback, or question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. So um, you said you took a long time, five months, for your first first time contribution and open source publication. I think that's not a very long time. Really? You know, it, yes, of course. I mean, to a developer, it, it seems that way because you just want to go, but you need to figure all these things out, right? So to do this in five months is, is not such a long time. So I'm from uh, Mercedes-Benz, mm -hmm. and so we are a traditional German company, <laughs> right? And we had the same struggles. So the first time it took, it took us at least as long as well, mm -hmm. you know, and then we went, we went through the same things, you know, I, I can totally confirm all of, all of what you said with uh, also the, the tendency to prioritize no risk. Yeah, because we're in a heavy, heavily regulated industry and our, you know, the attorneys, it's their job to prevent risk from the company. So they're like, yeah, let's maybe not do this, you know, but as engineers, it's our job to drive forward innovation. Mm -hmm. So we want no risk. Uh, we want, you know, we, ah, there's, it's not risky, you know, so th there's always this uh, um, conflict of interest between the two parties, but you just sit down with the right people and then, and then you can get things done. So uh, good job. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So I'm wondering, uh, you mentioned at the beginning that you, you know, you were changed, um, you know, of course, you know, defining this whole process. Um, but I'm still wondering, um, you know, when you start this kind of new idea or new way of working in your, in your company, have you, um, you know, faced any kind of uh, challenges from leaderships, you know, in terms of, you know, the mindset, you know, the, it's because it's, to it's totally a mindset change. Um, do you have challenges from the, you know, from that aspect? And how, if, you, if so, how did you um, convince your, how to say, your leaders to go in this way? Uh, okay, the basic understanding is in our company. I, um, I mean, uh, everybody knows the importance and everybody uh, think like we should do something uh, in con uh, for a con uh, to contribute uh, to our open source uh, ecosystem. So we need to do anything uh, to change the mindset of the people in the company. Uh, we just have no, uh, we just have no uh, procedure or the documented process inside the company. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to just to comment in, in, in the way you show us um, y your opinion or your point of view as conservative, I would like to call very respectful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were worried more about, um, or you, you were respectful uh, about the, how comply the yeah. process, how to do the, the yeah. things well. 
not um, rather than that, than conservative. Mm -hmm. um, I work for Continental Automotive, and we use more open source as consumers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a um, a good example uh, about how contribute with the community um, instead of thinking more about proprietary code mm -hmm. using open source. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great uh, to hear your 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 history, your, your journey uh, yeah. in all of this. And also I would like to ask you, uh, are you planning to contribute with more uh, packages or uh, other additions to your open source? Uh, yes, open of source? course. Okay. Yeah, he is now preparing uh, to release new version. Maybe it supports next version of SVDX, maybe. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so it's time to finish. So again, thank you very much for everyone to for your attention today. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimashita.